In this video, we're going to be talking about the bromine and Baer test for unsaturation. So suppose if you're given a compound that's either going to be an alkene, alkyne, or an alkane. So basically, you got the alkanes that are going to be your saturated compound, and you got your alkenes and alkynes that are going to be unsaturated. So you can actually tell the difference whether you have an unsaturated or a saturated compound given by running a bromine and Baer test. And that's because bromine in KMNO4 uh, that's used in the Baer test, is, they're going to be reacting with your unsaturated pi bonds there, whereas your alkanes will not react with either one of those. So let's talk about the bromine test first. The bromine itself has a brown color, so when I have an unknown compound and I add some bromine in there, so suppose I added some bromine in there, then the color of the solution is going to be brown. And then, if there is an alkane in the given compound, it will not react with the bromine, and as a result, your brown color will persist and uh, there is not going to be any reaction uh, when you have the alkane. However, when you, if there is an unsaturated compound, whether it's an alkene or alkyne, it will react with the bromine, giving them an addition reaction, and as a result, you get this clear solution. All right? <clears throat> so what really happens when you have the bromines added to the alkenes and the alkynes? Well, you <clears throat> go into an addition reaction where in case of uh, alkene, you get a vicinal dihalide. So you got a bromine here, and it'll have a bromine here. So that gives you an, a vicinal dihalide. And in case of an alkyne, since you have two pi bonds in there, you can actually add four bromines. So you'll have tetra halogenated compound being made here, or another way of saying tetrabrominated compound being made there. So as soon as your bromine is reacted, you don't have any bromines left in the original solution. That's why it goes clear. But if your bromine doesn't react like you would see in case of alkane, then it, your brown color is, will persist. And in that case, that's going to be your alkane. Okay, so the bromine test when it's run uh, to test on saturation, along with that, you also run the KMN4 or the Bayer test, just to kind of make sure that there was nothing wrong with the bromine test, because you know you may run into uh, impurities in the compound sometimes, and you may get a false positive. So just to confirm that there is an unsaturated compound present, you run a Bayer test. Now in Bayer test, you use KMN4, so the KMN4 originally is going to be purple in color, and if the KMN4 does react with your compound, it makes a different compound that's MnO2, so manganese 4 oxide, and this particular one is reddish brown in color. So suppose originally I have an unknown compound and I added some KMN4 into this uh, test tube here, then you will have this purple color. If it's an alkane, then this will not react with the KMN4 and you will n see no reaction and as a result your purple color will persist. And you want to make sure you're running this reaction under neutral conditions. If you're running the basic conditions, you will find uh, these alkynes making the acids at the end of the day as well to so just run those in the neutral conditions. Now, however, when these this KMNO4 react with the alkene and the alkyne, it makes MnO2, so manganese 4 oxide, and that's going to be reddish brown in color. So that confirms that this is going to be a positive bare test. Now, what really happens when you have uh, the alkene reacted with the KMNO4? Well, it makes an diol. So you have four carbons there, and it actually makes an acyl diol where the OH is going to be on the same side. All right, and along with that, it's going to make MnO2, and that's the one that's going to give you a brown color there. Okay, in addition to that, if I have the KMN4 reacting with the alkynes, it's going to make a dicarbonyl compound. So your dicarbonyl is going to have two carbonyls adjacent to one another. 
and you have to make sure you run this in neutral condition like I said earlier if you run this in um, basic condition then this dicarbonate will break into the acid form uh, into the carboxylic acid upon a proper workup with your small time small amount of acid but in either case you make this MnO2 manganese 4 oxide and that's going to be the one that gives you the brown color so that's how you can tell if there is an saturated compound or an unsaturated compound given to you it's now can you tell the difference between the alkene and the alkyne using those two tests well the answer is no because this test is mainly for the unsaturation and both your alkene and the alkynes will be unsaturated uh, to tell if there is an alkene or alkyne you will have to run some other test but here we're just going to be focusing on the Bayer and the bromine test which is mainly used for the unsaturation before I go I do want to mention the bromine test also <clears throat> gives a positive result when you use either phenol or aniline so these are your actually aromatic compounds they don't really do addition reaction they do uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions where phenol and aniline they are very reactive rings and you can have the bromine uh, attached to those rings by removing the hydrogen to, re to make sure the aromaticity is still there but just the bottom line is the phenol and the aniline will also give you the positive bromine test in addition to just the alkenes and alkynes hopefully this was helpful if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below